DB database. And the last one is the programming language using in this MongoDB database is the JavaScript. Okay, so what is database? Database is actually a collection of files that are storing the related data. And data is actually now uh, storing everywhere in our world. So for example, the Facebook post, the bank account, the UTEM students records, and the contact list on our WhatsApp. So let's say for the bank account, everyone the, the when you want to log in your bank account, they need to retrieve your user information from the database. So the user information, including your name, your password, your address, and your and your tech somethings is actually stored in the bank account of the database. So when the user and the bank want to retrieve the data from the to log in to your bank account, they need to retrieve the information from our database. Okay. So there's actually two schema management system in our world right now. And the first one is the flexible schema. It's useful when you are working with the unstructured data or have constantly changing the variability in your data set. So or need to respond to more rapidly changing your requirements. So uh, for today events, the MongoDB actually is belongs to this flexible schema, which means you no need to predefine your schema before you are saving your data inside your database. So it's quite flexible for you to manipulate your data afterwards because for the second one is the rigid schema and it's useful when you know the exact specification of each record in advance and you don't need to change often. It's better for something like the bank, bank account because when a user wants to save his information inside the bank, the information need to be predefined before the user is load the data inside to, into the database. So for example, the the row and the column, which means the username, the password, and the address and phone number. But for the flexible schema, it's very useful when you are not quite sure what you want to do to manipulate your data or your user key field for after your uh, after your project is development. So you can um quite flexible to changing your data field after you are rapidly constantly changing from your um from your variable after a while. So there are five types of database. The first one is non-relational database, and this is the point that we use now in our MongoDB. So it's also known as the document-oriented database, and it uses a key to uniquely identify the data within the database, which means that when there is a document inside a database, um, because maybe there's two documents that is, that is exactly the same, with the username and the password. So you need to have a key to uniquely predefine the document is actually not the same inside the database. So the key will be automatically generated by the MongoDB database when you are generate a new document. So a document is actually looks like a, a data set of a personal in our database. So it will the non-relational database do not prescribe any specific format or schema, it's just like the flexible schema I stated before. So the MongoDB database is actually a flexible schema scheme and it's a non-relational database or we call it as NoSQL database. So the second one is hierarchical database, network database, relational database, or we call it as SQL database and a time series database. So for the description of the information, just like we stated before for the Facebook post in our MongoDB database, so from here, you can see that there's a curly bracket and inside there contain the, the information when we post something inside our Facebook. So the first one is a user. The user is actually like a field for SQL and inside our MongoDB or we call it as non-SQL database, we call it as a key. So the key is a one that when you want to manipulate the data, you search from the key and you get the value from the key. It's just like a dictionary key and value field inside our dictionary Python. So the user will contain the my username and the title will be uh, something that you want to write for your Facebook post and the likes that you store the data information when a post is being liked by the other user and the comments which storing the comments is actually that written by another user. So when it's like you are not the original owner of the user, but you, when you are uh, browsing your Facebook and you look through this post, the Facebook database will be retrieved the information from this database ar around and you get out the my username and it, it will display on the display on your app and the title and the likes and your comments. 
So uh, MongoDB is a non regression database as stated before and using a key value stores. So the key is, is something that is predefined for your value. So from here, you can see that um, the key is uh, like a string of number and the value will be a Pizza Hut. So it's a string and also it will contain sometimes a curly bracket with uh, the key and key and value field inside the JSON format. So now uh, we will look through about what is the JSON format for and JSON format is actually a important structure to storing your data inside your data MongoDB database. So JSON is a uh, short form for JavaScript object notations. So we are using the JSON to storing our data inside the MongoDB database is because um, it has lightweight. The lightweight means that um, you don't need to have a predefined of the row and column just like your SQL database. So um, it can be just like a text base. So we can just write a curly bracket and then you write a key and the value of a field and you actually can retrieve the information very accurately with those lightweight database structure. And the second one is language independent, which means that um, it does not belong to any programming language. Although now we are using the JavaScript to uh, program our Node.js to manipulate the MongoDB database in this event, but actually it's language independent, which means that you can not only use JavaScript, you can also use Python, uh, PHP, uh, uh, Python, PHP, and also C++ or any any programming language as well. So uh, it's very useful when you want to like communicate between the back end and the front end because the JSON format is not uh, strictly to only used by the JavaScript. So when your front end is using the other programming language, it also can be used when your JSON format is actually sent correctly from your back end uh, to your front end. So the third advantage is easy to read and write. So this easy to read and write is not only for the user, it's also for the computer because the data structure is actually predefined very smoothly and very lightweight. So the computer can easily to find your document when you are specifically the key value uh, correctly inside your Node.js programming. So uh, the last one of the advantage is is a text base. So it's human readable data that exchange format. And uh, I see I said before it's like, uh, just like the, the start you said before, from here you can see that in the JSON format, there is a name with McDonald's and the country is Malaysia. So for our human, it's very easy to know that, oh, this JSON format is uh, state about uh, a shop for McDonald's and its name is McDonald's and the country is belong to Malaysia. And not only from the our uh, human view, for the computer view, it's also very easy to find out this McDonald's when you specifically key out the name for the JSON format inside our database. So um, there is some variable types inside our JSON format. So from here, we can see that the first one is string. Um, the first name is the key and the sunda is the, is the value. So inside a JSON format, uh, there is a start, in a curly bracket from start and a curly bracket at the end. So the first name should be the key and there's a pair of it. It's like when there's a key, there's a value. So for the key of the first name, uh, the value is Sunda and the key of the last name, the value is Pichai. Okay. So uh, when we see that the value have a double quotient, it means that it's a, a string, just like uh, the other programming language. So uh, when you see that the value is contains with double quotation, it's a string. And the second one is the age. So from here, you can see that when uh, the 50, is uh, when you are need to writing a variable from uh, like number integer or the long for like floating number that contains the decimal point, you don't need to have a double quotation. You can just directly uh, put your number that you desire to store in your database and it will, the JSON format will see it as an integer number. So the third one is true. Um, okay, it's also very easy. It's like a Boolean, Boolean expression like true and false. So you also no need to have something quotation in it. Uh, the JSON format that read from the Node.js or other programming language, you know that this is the value for Boolean expression that belongs to the merit key. So the last one is now. Now means that um, it contains nothing information. So uh, from here, you can see that the phone uh, is not, the information of the phone is not, uh, is not written by the 
username snapshot. So uh, the almostly the left one is a key and the right one is the value. So every key and value JSON pair will be separated by the comma. So from here you can see that after the first name Sunda, it will have a comma, which indicates that the JSON key value pair is actually ended and it will start with the another key value pair. So actually the last name can be right directly after the Sunda, but for our human reading easier, so we can just enter below and you we will stay away in the same format. And that's for it will be easy for our to for us to uh, manipulate our data in our Node.js programming language later on. So um, that is, um, you can briefly state away from three standard JSON formats. So the first one is the object list, and it's actually a sub-document. Oh, uh, just now we have stated that when a document is defined inside a MongoDB database, it will start from a curly bracket and end with a uh, curly bracket. But actually we can also make a sub document is like because this all JSON format is a document, but we can make one more curly bracket inside that value and you can predefine again the key and value inside that value. So um, for easy to explain, the slide has stated that the font key will have um, two object value. So the first one is the mobile and the second one is office because uh, in our real world, um, a, a person will not only have a mobile phone and his work, he also has his office work. So if he separate into the mobile phone and then the next pair of key of office phone, it will be like uh, not so structured for our database to retrieve our information later on. So we can just make a sub document inside that phone and we will uh, predefine again for the mobile and the office. So from here you can see that after the phone, we make a curly bracket again so we know that there's a new sub document with the object list inside that phone, and it will contain the key of a mobile and the key of the office. And after the uh, the sub document is predefined, finished, you also need to post with a curly bracket. Okay, so uh, for the second standard JSON format is a array value, also known as array list. So um, it's not like a is it. It's not like a what well, it's not like a number that's need to predefine inside that array. So actually you can put as an empty array, just like your other programming language. You can put whatever one is like number or string, such as in this uh in this slide, and the others boolean expression also can. So uh but for the array value, there's no key, there's just a value. It's like one phone, maybe that user got two mobile phones, so you can just um Right through his two mobile phone inside that phone array list because you don't need to uh, redeclare again the key of the phone for the same key inside a same document. So if a user got two phone number, we can just use a phone key and we use a array list and we put two phone number inside a same key. So when you retrieve the information from the MongoDB database, like from a key of the phone, you will get two uh, you get two value of the phone number uh, after you reading the value. So Okay, so the third one is the array of key, like an array of object list. It's actually the combination of the previous two standard JSON format. It's like an array and the object list combined together. So from the slide, you can see that the phone is the key value. And inside the value, yeah, it's a key field. And the value of the phone key is uh, contains an array. And for the array zero, you contains two object document. So it's like, uh, the same as before is like the mobile and the office. So um, it's quite um, maybe from from this uh, this point of view, you can see quite confused. But uh, to simply talk about it is actually like uh, let's say a person got two mobile phone and two office. So from here, we can state the mobile and office inside the first array and then we declare again a uh, next array and then you can declare again the mobile and office inside the second array. So it will be more easier for you to declare again the same mobile and office inside the same key form. But actually this, this standard JSON format is not quite often to use because uh, mostly we are using the array value or we just use the sub document for the object list. Okay. So uh, for our MongoDB, there's a basic operation inside our 
uh, database manipulations. That is a CIUD operation or we call it as crude operations. So it's actually a set of essential operations that will help you to interact with our MongoDB. So um, the crude operations is uh, stands for create, read, update, and delete. And from the graph, not the graph, from the image inside our slide, um, there is a database, collections, and documents. So uh, we can simply say that one database can contain multiple collections and one collections can contain multiple documents. Uh, if you want to change your point of view uh, from this non-SQL database to the SQL database, uh, just like your Excel, uh, each document is like a data from a personal user. And then one collections will be like, um, one collections will be like the row. The row, because um, each row will be contain many users. So um, a collections will contain many documents which predefine the user information. And then one database will con contain many collections. It's like, uh, let's say your database is about, uh, about a shop, uh, let's say a KFC. And then the collections will be like, um, the food inside the KFC is like, maybe is the, uh, like the, the ice cream, the sundae, and then the french fries and the burger. And then the documents will be like maybe the user information, the in the ingredients, or the buyer or the seller of the contact. So uh, it can help you to construct more easily to uh, with a flexible schema inside our non-SQL MongoDB database. Uh, it's actually uh, not so um, not so not so rigid compared to SQL, but uh, its advantage is is quite flexible. So when after you have some documents inside that collections, you can also add on the collections or add on the documents inside the database after you want to add on more user or customers. And the key inside the uh, the key inside your documents, it can also be manipulated after when your documents is actually being uh, been set from the initial. Uh, if you compare to the SQL, when your row and column value is fixed. So after all, when your customer is like, mm, maybe it's like a home number, because now everyone is, uh, not, not everyone home's got a phone num uh, home number already. So uh, when you're using a SQL database, uh, you already predefine a row with a home number. So after all, when there's a new customer adding, you, you have no choice, but you need to put a now value inside that, uh, that row. But if you are using a SQL or uh, SQL database, uh, after the home number is not uh, longer being used, you can just uh, you can just delete the key value of the home number inside the documents, and it will not affect the previous documents because it is uh, it is flexible. So the schema is not like uh, you need to predefine all the value before you are starting your database story. Okay, so the core operation stands for create, read, update, and delete. Okay. So the first one is the create. So um, the create is to insert or add a new documents in the collection. So as I said before, a database got multiple collections and one collection got multiple documents. So when you want to insert a new documents inside a collection, you can use these create operations. So uh, if a collection does not exist, then it will create a new collection in the database. Because when you are manipulating the data inside our programming, like the Node.js, you need to specify your database name, your collection names, and the documents that you want to insert. So let's say the database is uh, is actually appear inside the database. And then I mean the MongoDB database and the collection is already exist. So when you insert, it will just find out through the database and then collections, and then you insert this document. And the key, the unique key ID value will also uh, be automatically generated by the MongoDB database. But if they are found, the database name is exist, but the collection name doesn't exist. Um, you can still insert this document inside that MongoDB database, but it will generate a new collection name that is um, that is defined in your programming. So um, sometimes you need to make sure that your collection is uh, the name is. Is is the same as your MongoDB database because some some sometimes like the collection name is users y uh u s e r s, but when you are 
code inside your programming language, you are using user, U, Y is a uh, U, S, E, R. So in that case of the conditions, uh, you will insert wrongly your document into a next, uh, into a different collections. So um, there's two uh, main functions inside our Node.js. The first one is insert one, which means that you will insert a single document in the collection at a time after you run through that uh, programming language. Uh, and then the second one is insert many, which uh, just like the function name is insert the multiple documents in the collections. Because um, sometimes you are not uh, insert with one user only. You can just directly insert many of the document and it will save your times and save your operations to run through your programming code when you already know the information. So you don't need to like uh, running through many insert one for your programming. Okay, so for the second crew operations is read. So um, very easy is like to retrieve your documents from the collections or you want to query a collection for a document. So the first one is find. Uh, is there's not a find all, but if you want to write a find all function inside of Node.js, it also can. But in predefined, we just use find. And when you are not stating any condition inside your find function, it will just retrieve all the documents that found inside the collections. So it's like, because as stated before, you need to state your database name and your collection names. So after your collection names, um, when you put a find variables, the, uh, the find function variables, it will just retrieve all the documents that contains inside that collections that match your operations query. And then the second one is find one. So to retrieve the document, also to retrieve the documents from the collections, but it will just retrieve the first documents that contain inside the collections. Or if you want to specify some conditions, you can uh, write some condition inside your find variable, uh, find function, and you can retrieve the documents with more specifically uh, condition that you that you need to know about the document inside the database. And we will see later for the conditions when you want to do some read operations. Okay, the third one for the crude operation is update. So it used to update or we say as mod to modify the existing document in the collections. So um, it's quite commonly when sometimes it's looked through the password or the phone number. Because uh, if your document cannot update the value for the key, it's quite uh, become burden for your document to be increased significantly inside your database. So the update uh, function is quite important when like, let's say the user want to update his phone number. So you no need to like insert a new document with his username, the address, and the password or phone numbers, anything that is actually repeated with the document previously. So you can just update, uh, you can just find out the key that match the criteria. Let's say you are not matching the phone key, you are matching the user key. It's like now uh, the username with uh, Sunda, and then the user Sunda will be retrieved from the document inside the collections. And then it will find the key of the phone and then it will update the value for the key of the the key flow of the phone. So um, there's also two functions mainly inside our update crew operations. The first one is update one. Uh, it's like the function name is updates a single document in the collection that satisfy the given conditions. So the satisfy the given condition is means that like uh, it's not always just using the matching condition. It's like uh, not the user and then the username. You can also match the conditions uh, like the age is over 50 and then uh, you can change its like uh, its status to like become uh, young to old or something. And then the second one function is update many. It's used to update multiple documents in the collection that satisfies the given conditions because um, for the update one, let's say you are satisfied the condition is like more than 50 and then you state uh, you change the key of the status from young to old. But from this update one function, you can only change one document. So you need to run multiple times to uh, change entirely your document inside the collections. So the update menu is quite useful when you want to like uh, update the information with uh, same info for the, for the entire documents inside the collections. So the last crew operation is delete. So it is used to delete or remove the documents from the uh, collections. 
So the first one is uh, the delete one, which means you delete a single document in the collection that satisfies the given conditions. Like um, the document previously, is that the age is 50. So you can match the conditions like uh, age is 50, then you delete this document. Or like age is over 70, then you delete the document. Because maybe your customer is not beneficial for a company that is after 70. So you can just like uh, surely delete the document. But uh, with this function, you can only delete one document when you run through this operation inside your programming code. So the delete many is also useful when you want to delete multiple documents in the collection that satisfy the given conditions. But it's only contains inside the collection. Uh. It's like when you want to delete the, uh, not delete all, uh, like the entire documents that match the query in your operations, it only match the one inside that database and the collections name. So if you want to delete with other collection name, you need to run another operation in your programming code. So uh, it's like every crew operations is under your database and collections. So every time your operation is run through, you can only match through one database and then the collection that's inside the database. Okay, now uh, I, I got max a Kahoot and then uh, you don't need to type this uh, link. Okay, now I will open this Kahoot link and then uh, if you are like um, interested, you can just uh, join this Kahoot. Okay, yeah. Okay, um, this Kahoot question will be. Hello. Okay. Uh, this cover question will be like um, the information that I stated before inside that slide. So uh, it's quite an easy, easy game. Uh, okay, you can just join for this uh, cover.
okay, so uh, I will start this couple already. So uh, everyone that is uh, using his phone or his laptop or anything to join this couple, please prepare. Uh, it's actually 10 questions only for our Kahoot. So uh, it's not a very difficult answer. I, not a difficult question, okay? It's just like uh, information that I shared before for the slide. And not no need to stress because this Kahoot doesn't have any price at all, okay? So we just like mm, playing through our slide on it. So I will start the Kahoot now. Uh, let me mute first. Why, why there's why there's two person choosing the relational database system? Um, the relational database system is uh something like the SQL because there is a relationship and we need to predefine the schema for our SQL uh database. But uh for MongoDB is actually not a relational database system. It's a document oriented database system. We missed that. Uh, just like I stated before, the data is inside inside the document within the database and collections. So your database is manipulated between the document to retrieve your user information inside your MongoDB. OK, um, uh, I go through the next question. Okay, um, okay, um, most of the use has a really correct answer. It's a flexible schema model because you don't need to predefine your schema be, uh, before you insert any data inside your database. And you can, uh, the flexible is not just like predefined, you can also uh, changing your key or your delete or adding some key inside the document after your document is actually exists inside your database previously. Okay, uh, just like the question once, it's a non-relational database. Uh, okay, very easy. Huh? Okay, so next question. So um, as I stated before, the JSON is uh, its advantage is slightly easy to read and write text based, and the last one is language independent. So language independent, which means that you can use uh, any programming language to retrieve the document from the ODB database. So um, for its language, it's one of the programming language to retrieve the document. So um, the library is because the JSON format is quite uh, 
uh, it's quite easy to store with any without any data structure, not like the SQL. It's like you just imagine an Excel. You need to predefine the row and the column. So even though the value is not inside in the entirely document, you also need to like fill in all the data. If you didn't have fill in, you can use a now. But for the schema uh, flexible inside our MongoDB database, when you are not requiring the data inside your collections, you can just mm, inside the document key is uh, become a lightweight for your storing of the database. Uh, this means uh, 50, okay, the value. Uh, still remember, the left one is the key and the right one is the value. Key and value. So the variable types. Mm, okay, so uh, I said before the two inside that typically mean double quotations. So when uh, a number is being number double quotations inside our computer view, the I mean the machine view, it will seen as a string, but not as a number. If you want to store it as a number, you need to remove that double quotation and just directly insert the number inside that document value field. Okay, uh, this one, no need to explain. Uh, everyone know about it. It's a crate. Okay, it's when you want to make a new document inside the collection. I think that one is like, okay, retrieve documents which means that you need to query a document. It's like you need to uh, extract the information that you want from the document inside the collection database. Okay. Uh, Okay, uh, now we, we go back to our, uh, our slide. Okay. So I think everyone uh, quite okay for the Kahoot. So uh, I think everyone have already know the basic information about the MongoDB database. So, um, okay, now we need to getting start with the MongoDB cloud because just now we are like, uh, explain about the document, the structure, and the variable types inside our document. So 
Now, if you want to create a database, you can use the MongoDB cloud. It is called as Mongo Alice. So the, all of these documents will be uh, storing inside the cloud that provided by the Mongo. And you just need to use the service that will let you to make your operations, your, I mean, your query document inside your Node.js operations more easier because it can just directly retrieve the document from the cloud. So, uh, no need to like uh, uh, worry about the link. We will share the the link that uh, going through this website after this event is finished. Uh, but if you want to uh, find out this cloud MongoDB, you actually just need to type MongoDB cloud. Okay, so it's not the first one. It's th this one, the MongoDB cloud. Okay, so if you are first time to log in this website, you need to sign in, and then you will need you need to create create anything. Then when you log in, you go to here. Okay, so um, previously we said that we have uh database collections and documents, and then now we uh can browse the collections. Okay, let's say now we have this gdse.utem. So inside here from this cluster zero, the database will contain, inside this cluster will contain two database. The first one is GDSC and the second one is VMS. Okay, that's my personal things, okay. So the GDSC will contain the UTEM collections. Uh, so it means that the GDSC.UTEM match for the database.collections name. And then for each database and collections, it will contain the document inside. And then these four document actually is the example that I stated in the slide before. So the first one here is the ID. The ID is, uh, is the predefined ID key when you automatically generate it inside the document when you insert something inside the MongoDB database. So the first name will be Sunda and then last name will be Pichai. And then the age will be 50. So from here you can see that this 50 is not uh, using the double quotation mark. So we know that this is actually a number. And then the match is true for the Boolean, and then the form will be now for the now. And then, okay, just now the JSON standard format will have content tree format. So the first one is the object list. So from here, the object list will be like the phone, and then the mobile and office, and then it will have a string number. And then the second one will be the phone with the array. So array will be start from zero, just like the other programming language. So zero, one, two, three, four, five. And then uh, we can see that. At here, the phone number is not a number because it's using the quotation, double quotation mark. So it's actually seen by the machine as a string. Okay, so the first one is the object list. You can see that it's a phone and an object with mobile office and then phone with array. And then last one with the array. And then inside the array, like zero and one, you contain the object. Okay, so the object is mobile and office. And actually, you can also put this office inside that object mobile. So, and then you can also duplicate this mobile inside the object. So, which means that in this phone, the two array will contain two objects. Uh, something like this. Okay. So, let's say now you want to create this document and use the MongoDB Cloud uh, service. You actually can go to. Uh, wait a while, wait a while. Okay. Now, when you first. Log in inside your MongoDB cloud. It will show you this workspace. If not, you can just uh, directly go here and then view all organization. So organization is actually like a, a big structure when you want to store in the database. It's from the service from the Mongo cloud, it's, uh, like Atlas. And then let's say the organization is a name of the company, like uh, KFC or McDonald's. And then you just need to create a new organization. Let's say you put it as GDSC, okay? So uh, just use MongoDB Atlas. It's actually a cloud provided by the MongoDB. And then, oh yeah, this is the username. Uh, I mean the email that when you are using to log in your MongoDB cloud at the first times, and you automatically become the organization owner. Okay, so after you generate your organizations, now inside that organizations will be a project. So a project is like, a different project inside the company. Maybe it's like uh, the manufacturing department or the design department or the display department or anything. So 
from this project, you can set up a new project. It's like maybe you can write manufacturing or testing or quality, anything. So we just use, use them up. Okay. So uh, as the same, the project owner will be a username. It's like when there's organizations inside a company, you can assign a different project owner to your, like the manager of that department. Okay. So first one, you need to create the organizations and after that, the projects. Okay. So after you create the organization and projects, now you can create a database for your projects. I mean, inside that department. So we just need to press this build a database. Okay, so uh, we don't need to select this M10. Remember to select this M0 if you want to uh, play through this MongoDB only. It's using a storage of 512 MB and the RAM is shared, which means that the RAM is like sharing through the Mongo Cloud service, but it's, uh, it's quite enough for you to play along with the MongoDB database. And the virtual CPU is also shared. And then the provider can be Amazon's cloud or Azure, but um, it's not quite so, I mean, it's not so different. You can just select as one, the provider that you like. And then the region is also the same, but uh, I'm using the Singapore because it's quite uh, the nearest one, the region for the cloud provider. And then the name is like, inside the project, you will have a, you will have a cluster that used to store the whole database. And this cluster will be duplicate itself into a replica set, which, which means that when this database is inside a shutdown or not available, it will use the backup cluster because it will have a replica set with three. So it's, which means that it's uh, provided a more secure for your database when one database is being serv uh, server down or is being hacked by someone informations. So, uh, but, the disadvantage will be like when you are inside the document inside the database, it needs some time to replicate itself inside the Mongo Atlas service to uh, into his replica set for the cluster. Okay, so uh, the name is not uh, it's not not uh, it's not so important to always using it. Uh, it's when you want to make a connection with it. So now you credit. Okay, capture, okay, capture. Okay, okay. 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 So um, after you create the database, you will need your username and password. So uh, this username and password is very important uh, when you want to manipulate your data inside your Node.js, your programming language, because you need to make a connection with this link and inside that link, you need to contain your username and password. So now you, when you set your username and password, you need to uh, remember or you need to uh, find some somewhere to join that down, okay? So for username, let's say you put user and the password will be... Okay, use the password. Okay, remember to set a password that you can remember. Okay. Okay, so now you can see that the username and your password is actually already created inside your database service. And then uh, the IP address will be like, oh shit. Okay. So these entries for your IP access list is uh, quite important for you when you want to restrict the IP address that's different from your local environments, such as your PC or your laptop, so that they can access only through your laptop IP. Yeah, not your laptop IP, I mean your local network. So uh, for you to easy to play around your MongoDB, so you can just uh, put an entry with 0 .0 .0 0.0.0.0, which means that it doesn't restrict at all. Any IP can uh, connect with your MongoDB address, even though it's in a different network, because sometimes you, you may connect inside your, uh, I don't know, your, your, work, your workplace or inside the UTEM. So, the IP address with 0, 0.0.0, 0, 0 is uh, more easier for you to make a connections. But when you have a important document inside that database, it is not uh, not encouraged to do, to do so. Okay, so add entry and then finish and close. Okay. Okay, now, um, okay, uh, let me repeat again. You have uh, organizations and after you create organizations, you can create a project and then you create a project you can create your database. 
And then database, you need to define two things. The first one is your username and password to uh, later on, you need to make your connections. And then the second one will be your IP address access list. Uh, for this moment, you can just use 0 0.0.0.0. 0 .0 .0 .0. And then it will generate the cluster because uh, it's, I can see here, the, the type is replica set with three nodes, which means that the database will be duplicate itself three uh, two times so that there is a three sets of replica set. And then uh, it needs some time to generate. So after this event, you can generate for your, um, for later on, okay. So now, um, let's say I go back to, okay, so now um, at this moment, you already create your database. Uh, after you uh, create, finish your cluster, you can see it like this, and then you have a connect and browse collections. Okay, now uh, I will uh, introduce some GUI for like the graphic user interface for the MongoDB cloud. It's an app and actually I think it's quite useful for you to manipulate with the MongoDB. Uh, it's called MongoDB Compass. Yeah, this one. So it's uh, the GUI for MongoDB Compass. So after this, you can just download here and then uh, I will send the link after this event. So let's say now you want to connect with your MongoDB. You are not necessary to using the Mongo Cloud inside your web browser. You can just download this Mongo Compass and you can just uh, connect it with your Compass. And the, the interface is quite nice for you to manipulate with your document. Okay, so if you want to connect with it, you can use this connect. Okay, so connect using MongoDB Compass. Okay, so uh, for the first time, you can just write, I do not have MongoDB Compass. And then you choose your Windows and then you just download. Or you can just go in to find out this and download, it's the same, okay? And then here you can see that this is a connection string. And then this connection string is the, this one is the, uh, this one is my username, okay, uh, Han. And then this is the password. You need to uh, replace this password with the password that you set before. So uh, that's why the password you need to remember the when you are generating your database. So the cluster zero is the cluster that you named before uh, because I just used the default, so it's cluster zero. And then when you download the MongoDB Compass, uh, you can select your version, and then you just copy this string inside your MongoDB Compass. Okay, so um, okay. now uh, I open my MongoDB Compass so that you can know how to connect it. Mm. Okay. Okay, so now from this MongoDB Compass, let's say you have a uh, connect with it. Let's say this connection, you can just write the, the connection string inside your MongoDB, the cloud provided after you generate the database. So uh, this one is the Han and then the password. Okay, this, this, this is the SRE link that I uh, showed before. And then you just press connect. Okay. So from here, you can see that uh, the compass actually is quite look similarly to the cloud, but it's more beautifully GUI. So from here, you can see that the GDSC and then the UTEM. Oh, inside here, you can see that the storage size, the document, four document in the Mongo cloud, and then the index. Okay. So from here, uh, this actually is the same. Uh, the phone, object, array, and then the phone with object. Okay. So if you want to make a copy you can just copy or you want to edit you can just edit here and then you can choose your string your object it's more it is quite uh more convenient compared to your mongo card okay so uh from here let's say i okay so from here you can see that uh it can not only use in gui format you can also see like this um because this is the gui format and then this is the the JSON format when you want to make a manipulation for your document. So from here you can see that the phone and then the curly bracket indicates the object list. And then this one will be the array. So from here you can see that it's array for the phone number. So if you already finish, uh, finish your documentation, you can just uh, disconnect. And then uh, because I saved it, the SRV link already, so this will more easier for me to connect it afterward. 
So this is MongoDB Compass. So if you want to create a database, you need to go to Mongo Cloud, which means that the MongoDB allows to create your database inside the organization and project. And after you, you create the database, you are not necessary to use the browser to always like open the connection between your Mongo Cloud. You can just download this MongoDB Compass and then you make a connection with your cloud and save it the SRV link. So uh, every time when you want to manipulate with your MongoDB card or you want to verify something document, you can just directly connect into this MongoDB Compass app. Okay, so now. Uh, okay, after you connect it with your database, and then now you can make some uh, crude operations like we stated before the create, read, update, and delete operations. So, um, okay, this will be our part two, which means that tomorrow. So today is actually is like an introduction for those who uh, haven't any concept inside our MongoDB. So tomorrow the part two will be have a manipulation with our Node.js inside our document. So, um, okay. So if you want to, okay, I just need to do Node.js. Yeah. So, uh, if you want to prepare for your uh environment for tomorrow, uh, the tomorrow event, you can download your Node.js environment first, and uh, just just download, and then you extract, and then you install, and then you restart. After that, you should be install your Node.js to make a manipulation for your MongoDB inside your Visual Studio Code. So, um. The database, you have a crude operations for tomorrow for the create, read, update, and delete. So today we just introduced the, the concept and then the, the manipulation about the crude operations inside our MongoDB database. So tomorrow we have using the uh, Visual Studio Codes with Node.js environment to make those crude operations with our JavaScript to actually retrieve the document or update the document inside our local environment. So, um, okay, so thanks, thanks all for attending this event. And then for part two, it will be tomorrow at the same, te uh, same time. And then the event link will be at here. You just need to scan it and then you can join this event. And uh, it's actually inside this, the same platform for this MS team. And uh, if you haven't followed our social media, you can uh, scan the right side, the link tree, and you can follow our LinkedIn, YouTube, Facebook, Instagram. So uh, that's all for today's event. Uh, thanks for joining. Thank you. Hello.